Let's see who we got so far. Lisa Y, good morning. Who else we got? Give me a second, y'all. Let me pull this thing back up. And then I'll probably just boop, try to do that. There we go. Good morning, Shalise. How you doing, Mama Shalise? Good morning, Kim. Good morning. Happy Monday. What's up? <laughs> ah! Ah! Lord have mercy. Well, I like to I like to not be on the morning tea by myself too. So I wait until I see a couple people on and then I come on after I've populated the whole thing. <laughs> Good morning, Angie. How are you today? How are you today? Air goodness. Oh, goodness. Y'all, good morning, Sharon. Cindy Boo, how are y'all doing? Y'all, this is my month in my social media planner. <laughs> ah, nothing is done in here absolutely nothing okay i mean of course we've been on the morning tea we've been doing things and talking about things but is it written no melly good morning what were we supposed to be using for the month of march i don't have march in here what good morning everyone <coughs> let's see let's see what we're supposed to be doing for the month of march well march well it's gonna be a kit it's gonna be a kit we haven't i haven't picked it yet that's exactly how it be sharon that's exactly how it be so we gonna do some of this we gonna do this we gonna do this rebecca morning becky Bay. Morning, Becky Bay. Mm, let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got for the month of March. Let's see what we got. Um, maybe we're going to have to pick something and probably come back to it tomorrow. Uh, we might have to pick something and come back to it tomorrow. I don't know yet. I don't know yet. What's up, everybody? Karen, good morning. Welcome, welcome. Atia, sweetheart, how are you doing today, Miss Washington? Good morning. Welcome to the morning tea, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Tamara is here walking back and forth, y'all, to the cart. We walking back and forth to the cart. Back and forth to the cart to see what goodies we got on the cart today, okay? We just going back and forth. Uh, I'm going to have to look look for something and then come back to it. But, but, <laughs> y'all, what color y'all y'all using for March? What is in March? Let's see. St. Patrick's. Ooh, some people doing green. Okay, St. Patrick's. Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. March is coming and spring is coming. The first, look, when spring begins, it's the International Day of Happiness because we're just so happy. Corinna, good morning. Oh, just thinking about it gets me happy. Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. It's next month already and spring is in the air. Woo-wee! Yippee! Oh, praise the Lord God Almighty. I love it. Okay, I'm super happy now. <laughs> I am super happy now. So I am going to use this for March. Boom. Spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. Woo. 
<laughs> Atia, Feb February is over. Let me just let you know, February is over and we are doing March, okay? February is over. We are picking March. March is going to be the happy month because spring is in the air. Spring is in the air. I love it. Yippee. Oh, that's so cool. I feel so good this morning. What's up, Jewelry and Naboo? I feel good this morning because uh, we have realized uh, that spring is coming in March. Okay, so uh, one week, two week, three weeks. Did someone just say we have six weeks? That's three weeks, four weeks. We got like five and a half. Okay, five weeks away from now. Five and a half weeks. What? Okay, so we got to do this week. So it's a six week. Six weeks from now will be spring is in the air. You can still see all the white stuff in March and April, Sharon. Oh my goodness. March is Angie's birthday. So spring is her favorite season. Ooh, Justin Bay, good morning. So I'm going to pick this for the month. And I need to also pick a cover. I do have the pen as well, thanks to Becky Bay. So, uh, um, I'm going to, I'm sorry, thanks to, uh, I got the pen for this, thanks to uh, Kim. So I'm going to be um, using that for the month of March. Okay, so that has been decided. So now I also need to decide on which cover I'm going to be using for the month of March. And so one of the things I like to do um, sometimes, even though I may have something pre-planned already for a particular month, I do like to change it up as necessary. So we see it's spring. I don't have St. Patty's Day covers or anything like that. So, um... We, I need to figure out a cover to use on this right here. So, let me grab um, this. Okay, I'm going to grab this real quick. And I'm going to go over to the front of this. What I have done, um, let me see, I've started writing something in it. So, I can't show you that page. Okay, so this is my daily duo. All right. Um... To the sister island, St. Martin, and to the neighborhood. Oh, Jorina. Yes. Yes. Love it. Love those two places. Definitely, definitely going to visit. You're not going to see 20 this weekend. I'm sorry. We are in the 50s. Going to border 60 this week one day, like one or two days. I'm loving it. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Thank you very much. So what I've done in this is I Franken-planned or I put in some additional pages, okay? So I have this page that comes with the planner and then I added these two pages in the front before the months to be able to write certain things when I so need to. So like I need to go ahead right now, okay, take that off. Okay, we're not gonna use that quite yet. Don't use it yet, You're getting ahead of yourself. Getting ahead of yourself. So I need to pick. Um, and this is actually. Mm, I may not change. the. I'm not going to change the cover on this. But I'll change the cover on this one. Because this cover. Y'all already know. That this is my. This is my cover right here. Okay. This is my cover right here. I, I don't. I don't feel the need. The pull. The tug. To change this particular cover. But I will change this one. So pick um, daily duo cover for March. Okay, and I also need to uh, pick my folio cover um, for March. What else? So those are, oh, and I'm also going to be switching up. I need a, a half sheet. So I need to pick a half sheet planner and cover for March. Well, really, really, actually, to be quite honest, we're going to start using it 
before then. We're going to start using it before then. And I have one in mind, but I don't know if it would go with anything. Um, and I'm going to show y'all which one. Hold on. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. All right, so this one I have not used. I have not really used this one yet. So I'm thinking of this for the month of March. Is she colorful? Why, yes, she's very colorful. Ah, she is quite, quite colorful. So I'm thinking of this one um, because this one has, you know, I never ever give up on myself as well. So, yeah, I do like this cover as well. Um, <laughs> I am, Angie, I am. I am. We are doing some plan, you know, just some prepping, picking. So, I don't know what y'all think. I think this. I'm also going to be probably taking this with me. The reason why I want to set this up a little bit early is that I'm going to probably be taking this with me tomorrow when I go to my appointment. So, um, uh, news announcement also beforehand, tomorrow morning, we will not have the regular morning tea on YouTube, okay? No regular morning tea on YouTube tomorrow. Um, I probably will do a quick update depending on if I'm able to or not from the hospital but tomorrow is when i'm doing the transfusion so yeah we are um, and i'll be there for a couple hours so i'm going to take this and make some plans because lister's got a list plan babe's got a plan and i would need to set this up because the sheets on the inside are not the sheets that i want to take um with me okay so i need to set that up in a way today so i'll probably end up choosing that and i think it'll probably go with march but i have to look through my covers that i'm going to put with this and my folio cover because y'all know i like to matchy matchy i like to matchy matchy with in in that aspect i like to make sure my things match so let's see who else came in janet good morning janet b welcome to the morning tea peggy jean Tanisha, uh, who else? Did I miss anybody? Monica Woodley, good morning. If I didn't say good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome anyone else that I came in while I was yapping. If I did not say good morning to you, I apologize. Good morning. Welcome into the morning tea. So glad to have you all here today. Where's my tablet? Where is my tablet? Okay, where is the tablet, y'all? Good gosh. Tamara is just not have anything with her. Um, thank you very much, Janet. I do appreciate that. Thank you all as well, Jarena. I appreciate that. Um, yo, where's this tablet? Let me go get this tablet. I was so busy minding the business of stickers. <laughs> I didn't have my tablet. Ah, Cheryl, good morning. Uh, Flores, good morning. Uh, I'm Angela Melvin, good morning. Cheryl, did we touch base on your package? I don't think we touched base on your package, Cheryl. Message me if we did not. Um, I'm not sure. I know somebody else's package. I have two left. I'm coming, y'all. Let me go get my, um, oh, good grief. I thought I had the tablet out here with me. Let me go get my tablet. That's what I get, minding mind sticker business instead of minding my own tablet business. Mm -mm 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 -mm. So, uh, appointment number one for the week is today. So this morning, I need to go get my um, mammogram and to go get the people some blood so they could do whatever they got to do at the hospital this morning. So after we get off the morning tea... I have to go get ready and do all that stuff. I do have the day uh, planned out inside of here, if I can ever get to it. So I do have my day um, already planned out. Y'all, where is... Oh, it's on this side. Damn. So I've got the day pretty much um, lined out with stuff that I have to do. I'm not sure how long we're going to take with that mammogram. So 
I don't, I have not really scheduled anything afterwards. If I'm able to get my hair done, great. If not, we're just going to leave that how that be. We're just going to leave that how that be um, as well. So we have this picked out. This is the set that I'm going to be using for the month of March in here. So um, I'm going to put this to the side for the moment because we're going to do a plan with me in that. Maybe not today, but we're going to do a plan with me in that. And then also in my Moxie coming up. This is the sticker book. We are going to be using Empowering Women for the month of March in the Moxie. Okay, so um, y'all know I believe it's the last, normally the last week of the month is when I try to do those plan with me's. But we're probably going to end up doing those plan with me's this month, um, this week, because, uh, uh, <laughs> We're not, we might not be able to just to sit up enough to do the whole, stand up enough to do this whole plan with me at the end of the month, by the end of the month. So, I don't know. So, we gonna do what we can do early before NT thing, because we don't know. Okay. Type you and screen it for anybody so it's safe for you. Yes, Kim. Thank you very much. Type me. Type me up. Type me up, people. Desiree, good morning. Welcome to the morning tea. Hide me up. Uh, I'm, I'm ready, but I'm not ready. But I'm ready, and I'm not ready. I'm like, okay, the week is here. I mean, you know. Whew, seven days. Seven days. Oh, goodness. Okay, so let's get into today's reading for our um, uh, Black History Month. Let's get into today's reading for our Black History Month. Grace, good morning. How are you? So we're going to, where do we stop off the last time? Because it refreshes every time. 40s, we did the 40s. 60s, we did not, I don't think we did the, nope, we didn't do the 60s. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's go ahead with the 60s. Okay, we did the 58, so we're going to start with the 1860s, y'all. 1860s. Mm. Had a number of things that happened in the 1860s. Um, Angie, I hope so. <laughs> we, ah! Angie, whatever doesn't get done today, roll over to tomorrow. It rolls over to tomorrow, sis. We're just trying a little at a time, a little at a time. So let's start with the 1860s. Um, and these are firsts for those who might uh, be here for the first time. First things that are happening um, in particular years that that uh, has been recorded in um, African-American history. So um, in 1861, we had the first North American military unit with African-American officers. And that is the first Louisiana Native Guard of the Confederate Army. That's a whole long name. First Louisiana Native Guard of the Confederate Army. Um, so that was the first North American military unit with African American officers. You have the first African American U.S. federal government civil servant. And his name was William Cooper Neal, or Nell, I'm sorry, William, William Cooper Nell, N-E-L-L. -L. Um, William Cooper Nell was born in December 16th, 1816, and he died May 25th, 1874. Um, he was an African-American abolitionist, journal publisher, editor, and civil servant of Boston, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Okay, who can say that right? So <laughs> um, he worked for integration of, pub of schools and public facilities in the state. He was writing, he, writing for abolitionist newspapers, The Liberator and The North star. He helped publicize the anti-slavery cause um, as well. So that is William Cooper Nell. Okay. 
Massachusetts. <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> oh, my tongue don't like that. Mass Massachusetts. Ah! <laughs> Shalisa, I cannot say that four times fast. Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Oh, God. Shalise! That was not a good example. Okay, we're going to move on. Move on. <laughs> in uh the same year 1860 uh no next year 1862 first african american woman to earn a ba degree mary jane patterson from oberlin college from oberlin college <laughs> uh mama shalice i'm done I'm finished with your pronunciations. Mm. We just gonna say Massachusetts. We just gonna say that. <laughs> Shalise, we just okay. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not today. Not today. Not today. Too early. Shalise is like, come on, try one more time. No. Um, 1862, also the first recognized U.S. Army African-American combat unit. First South Carolina volunteers. Angie is not funny. Angie is not funny. Amanda Boston, good morning. Welcome to the morning tea. In 1863, we had the first college owned and operated by African-Americans, which was Wilberforce University in Ohio. Same in 1863, we have the first African-American president of a college, and that was of, of course, Wilberforce University. His name was Bishop Daniel Payne. Daniel Payne. Lisa Y, what was her name? Okay, I'm going to tell you in a second. Look at Shalee, one more time. I cannot. Uh, some of us born in the state can't pronounce it correctly. Oh, my goodness. Um... Mary Jane Patterson. She was the first African American woman to earn a BA degree. Mary Jane Patterson, and that was in 1862. Um, Mary Jane, it was born September the 12th, 1840, and died September 24th, 1894. Um, as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. Good morning. Yes. Yeah, so we're listing some firsts by African Americans listed in history. Um, 1864. Yes. Here's another woman. So 1864, the first African American woman in the United States to earn a MD. Her name, Dr. Rebecca Davis Lee Crumpler. Crump with a P, crumpler. Um, right, Sharon? I'm like, I'm going to need them to do something else, okay? So the first African-American woman in the United States to earn a MD, Dr. Rebecca Davis Lee Crumpler. Uh, she was born Rebecca Davis, um, uh, February the 8th, 18. 31. She died March 9th, 1895. She was an American physician, nurse, and author after studying at the New England Female Medical College in 1864. She became the first African American woman to become a doctor of medicine in the United States. Crumpler was one of the first female physician authors in the 19th century. In 1883, she published a book of medical discourses. Um, the book has two parts that cover the prevention and cure of infertile bowel comp complaints and the life and growth of human beings. Dedicated to nurses and mothers, it focuses on maternal and pediatric medical care 
and was among the first published publications written by an African American about medicine. So she was an OBGYN. What? Even though that, you know, really wasn't the thing, but yeah, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> that was awesome, um, Rebecca David Lee Crumpler. In 1865, in 1865, we had the first African-American attorney admitted to the bar of the U.S. Supreme Court. What? Good morning, Denise. You, li you live near Wilberforce, Misha? Oh, man. So the first African-American attorney admitted to the bar um, of the U.S. Supreme Court was John Stuart Rock, and that was in 1865. Y'all, John Stewart got it going on. Hold up. <laughs> okay. 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 <laughs> So I'm going to show y'all this picture that they have of John Stewart Rock, okay? The reason why Tamara was laughing is the hair. All the hair. Okay? And I don't and y'all not, might not be able to see it good like I could see it good, but I'm going to show y'all, y'all look at the hair. What is happening with the front of his hair? What's happening here? Is it is it the glare from the photo? John, what's happening, John? <laughs> What is happening? Does John have finger waves? Is that what this is? Is that what this is, John? Is this finger waves? Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, that was a good laugh this morning, Jesus. I thank you. Jesus, you got such a good sense of humor. You're going to show up John like this with his finger waves. Hold on. Let me read about John. John was the man, though. So we can't be laughing too much at John. And I'm sure that was the thing back then, okay? It was the end thing. So John Stewart Rock <laughs> was born October the 13th, 1825. He died December the 3rd, 1860. Uh, 18, I'm sorry, 1866. He was an American teacher, doctor, a dentist, a lawyer, an a, a, a abolitionist, historically associated with the coining of the term black is beautiful. What? John! John got game! <laughs> that was before they knew about the comb over. <laughs> Oh, John got game. So it says historically he's been associated with the coining of the term black is beautiful, though to have originated, uh, thought to have originated from a speech that he made in 1855. However, historical records now indicate that he never actually used the specific phrase on that day. So John did not got game. Okay, so it wasn't his. So it says Rock was one of the first African-American men to earn a medical degree. In addition, he was the first black person <clears throat> to be admitted to the bar of the Supreme Court of the United States. Oh, wow. Wow. That's nice. <laughs> Tanisha, John got some finger waves. I love it. Love it. So his parents were actually freeborns as well. <laughs> I didn't pull his game. The facts pulled John's game, okay? John, but he was he was a hustler though. John was a modern day hustler. He was a hustler. John was a doctor, dentist, lawyer, teacher. John ain't never not had a job, y'all. John never not have a job. Job was John was always working on something. Let me just tell you, if your man ain't working on something like John, I don't know what to do with you. I don't know what to do with you. He was a hustler. In 1865, that same year with Rock and John, we had the first African-American to be commissioned 
as captain in the regular U.S. Army. Um, oh my gosh. He was affectionately known as O.S.B. Wall. W-A-L-L -L is his last name. Okay, y'all, I'm going to try to pronounce this man's name. Okay, I'm going to try to pronounce it, his name. Orin Datus. His first name, Orin Datus. O-R-I-N-D-A-T-U-S. Second name, Simon. Third name, Bolivar. That's why they call him OSB, because they know nobody had time to say Orin Datus Simon Bolivar. Can you imagine when he got in trouble? Orin Datus Simon Bolivar! No, OSB Wall. So he was the first African American to be commissioned as captain in the regular U.S. Army. Because before that, we had, you know, infantries uh, of, of blacks, all blacks, etc. But now he was in the regular army um, being a captain. So OSB Wall, more power to you. 1866, we have the first African American to earn a PhD, and this was Father Patrick Francis Healy, and he earned it from the University of Leuven in Belgium, in Belgium. John was out here showing them how to do things, this this how men's be doing it. John was like, this how men's be doing it. If you ain't doing something like this, then you hungry. John was like, if you ain't doing something like this, you ain't about nothing and you hungry. I ain't got time for that. So, boom. Um, also, we have, oh, wow. In 1866, y'all, we had the first African-American woman enlistee in the U.S. Army. What? And she was Kathy um, it might be Kathy, but it might be Kate. Okay, Kathy Williams. I'm gonna say Kathy Williams. It's spelled C A T H A Y, so it might be Kate. Kate. Mm. So we're gonna call her Kathy today or Cat. C A T, we're gonna call you Cat. Okay, Cat Williams. That is early for women. Yes. So it was in 1866. Sixty-six, the first woman. Uh, oh, look at Kathy! What? There's a painting of um, Cat Williams by Williams Jennings um, from the U.S. Army Profiles of Bravery. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna show you her. Like, girl, you travel with all that stuff? I'm gonna show y'all a picture. Look at this. If this don't say woman of power, I don't know what that says. If this doesn't say woman of power, I don't know what else. Oh my goodness. This said come for it. Cat is saying come for some. Come for some. If you ready, I'm ready. Come for some. Come for some. So she was born um, in Independence, Missouri to a free man and a woman in slavery. Um, making her legal status status also out as of a slave so she was born a slave my gosh or at least her legal status during her adolescence williams worked as a house slave on the johnson plantation on the outskirts of jefferson city good morning denise good morning good morning um so she worked on the outskirts of jefferson city missouri in 1861 Union forces occupied Jefferson City in the early stages of the Civil War. At that time, captured slaves were officially designated by the Union as contraband. What nonsense is that? What? And many were forced to serve in the mil military support roles such as cooks, uh, laundresses or nurses. What? Contraband. Yo! What? No anyway, let's move forward. Let's move forward. Um, it said, let me move down. It says, you was hurt to her service. It said, despite, <laughs> it says, despite the prohibition against women serving in the military, 
Um, Kathy Williams enlisted in the U U.S. regular army under the false name of William. Ah! She tricked him! She tricked him! She turned her name around, William Kathy. Well, so that means it's Cathay. <laughs> so she tricked them. Her name is, she enlisted as William Cathay. Oh, she tricked them. Um, I'm, I'm going to get back to you on that, Angie. I'm going to get back to you. Let me finish this. So she enrolled on November 15th, 1866 at St. Louis, Missouri for a three-year engagement, passing herself off as a man. She tricked him. She was assigned to the 38th United States Infantry Regiment after she passed a curiosity medical examination. How she passed the... Uh, no, I'm sorry. A cursory. I'm sorry. Okay, it's a cursory medical examination. They ain't touch nothing. Only two others are known to have been privy to the deception. Her cousin and a friend, both of whom were fellow soldiers in her regiment. They assisted her in the fraudulent act, in the cover up. Y'all, this getting juicy. This getting juicy. Shortly after her enlistment, Williams con contracted smallpox, was hospitalized, and rejoined her unit which by then was posted in New Mexico, possibly due to the effects of smallpox and uh, of smallpox, the New Mexico heat or the cumulative effects of years of marching, her body began to show signs of strain. She was frequently hospitalized. The post um, surgeon finally discovered after three years, y'all, the post search and finally discovered she was a woman and informed the per post commander. She was discharged from the army by her commanding officer, Ch Captain Charles E. Clark, on October the 14th, 1868. Yo, yo, cat is straight up hustler. Oh, snap. This is so good. How you go? Yes, three years. Okay, so um, Angie, back to your question. What was contraband? Captured slaves at that time, 1861, captured ish, era ish, captured slaves um, were designated by the union as contraband. So we were contraband. So, and then they used us you know, as cooks, laundresses, or nurses. Oh, my goodness. L listen, maybe this is where they've got all the, got, got all those movies from when people disguise themselves, girls disguise themselves as boys and go places. They got it from Cathay Williams. Oh, she done pulled, oh, three years. She fooled y'all. This is so juicy. Okay, I'm gonna read one more. <laughs> Yo! Um, so in same 1866, we have the first American woman, African American woman, to serve as a professor. Um, and her name was Sarah Jane Woodson Early. And this was at Ohio's Wilberforce University, hired her to teach Latin. And English, this is in 1866, Latin and English. Hey, Erica, good morning. How she hit that period for three years? Obviously, she did not have fibroids. I'm just saying. Obviously, she didn't have none of them issues. She probably just had, you know, uh, put some extra, extra material and did... What she had to do, just put some extra material. You go behind the tent. You go to the river, nearby river. You do what you got to do because they do it in the armed forces kind of sort of now in a way. But, you know, not really. I'm just saying. You see how much stuff she had on her? She had something somewhere. She had something somewhere. Cat, cat, was, cat was a hustler. She was getting her stuff done one way or the other. Wow. Okay, so let's go. Um, 1868, the first elected African American lieutenant governor was Oscar Dunn, and this was in Louisiana. Now we also had the first African American mayor, Pierre Caliste Landry, 
Donaldsonville, Louisiana. Okay. We have the first African American elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, which was John Willis Menard. Um, or Menard. It's M E N A R D, or right? Um, his opponent contested his election and um, and opposition to his election presented him prevented him from being seated in Congress. Y'all, why are they still trying to not seat people in Congress? Why are they still trying to not seat people up 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 up, up to twenty twenty? Okay, well not really twenty twenty one, but twenty twenty. Why they gotta be like this? They so shifty. Anyway, we gonna move forward from that one. They started out with John Willis, and they still going at it. Still going at it. 1869. 1869. Let's move on to 1869. We had the first African American woman school principal. Can we get a what what for Miss Fanny Jackson Coppin? C O P P I N. Fanny F A N N Y Jackson Coppin. If this was at the Institute for Colored Youth, and she was the school principal there. Fanny looked like a principal. Fanny looked like, you don't want to mess with Fanny, okay? That's the picture they got up of Fanny. Don't mind my dirty screen, y'all. Don't play. Good morning. Okay, that is Fanny. Fanny looked like she don't play. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so that ends the 1860s. Kim Chi, good morning. That ends the 1860s. Okay, so we're going to leave that one alone. So I got a couple readings to catch up on because we had the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. So uh, we're going to need to catch up on that. <laughs> Y'all, let's, let's find this date. So the 6th, 7th, I'm going to read the 6th, 7th, and the 8th. Okay, it's very short, 6th, 7th, and the 8th. So this is the day, the particular day in, um, in history, particular day in, don't mess with any Southern woman. I'm telling you, February the 6th, which would have been on Friday, um, 1820, the Mayflower of Liberia sailed from New York city with 86 blacks on board. 86. The population on board was 1,771. No, I'm sorry. Uh, wait, wait. Mayflower of Liberia sailed from New York City with 86 blacks. Done. Done. Um, February 6, 1993. Um, some of us might remember this one. Arthur Ashe dies. He is the first African American tennis player to win at Wimbledon. Y'all know, y'all know. Um, February 6th, 1867, Robert Tanner Jackson becomes the first African American to receive a degree in dentistry, right? Um, and we read some of this in the other stuff as well. So on the 7th, let's move on to the 7th. Uh, February 7th, 1926, Negro History Week, originated by Carter G. Woodson, is observed for the first time. And now on to the 8th, February 8th in history, um, 1944, Harry S. McAlphin, M-C-A-L-P-H-I-N, first African American to be credited to attend the White House press conference. What? Yep, they let the black one in the room at 1944. Um, in February 8th, 1986, y'all, this sounds like, like forever ago, Oprah Winfrey becomes the first African American woman to host a nationally syndicated talk show. Bam. This happened in 1986. I know all y'all today, today, you know what y'all need to do today? That whole Oprah meme that y'all got or gift that where she's screaming, ah, shaking her head. Y'all need to post that all over social media. Today in history, Oprah Winfrey 
becomes the first African-American woman to host a nationally syndicated talk show um, as well. It just doesn't seem so, so long for you, Angie. Oh my goodness. So I hope you all enjoyed that reading. I hope you all enjoyed that reading. Oh, Lord, we ain't even got much time left. Good grief. You was in high school? Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. Mm I wasn't quite there yet. I wasn't quite there yet. I wasn't quite there yet. <clears throat> so I want to share something else with you all today. Um, let me get my tablet back. I don't even know why I'm packing all this stuff up on top, on top of it. So some of you may or may not know that we are currently in the process of reading a book. Oh my goodness. And we're reading the book for the... Um, Get Your Goal On, which if you are not familiar with Get Your Goal On, it is our goal accountability group. It is a paid group. Um, um, 86, 86. It is in 1986, Peggy Jean. Um, and um, uh, the book that we're reading in that right now is Atomic Habits. If you have not read that book, oh my word, we um, did our first reading slash, you know, picking out some tips from the book. So I wanted to share something with you from the book because that book, oh, we added to the one thing um, that we read last quarter has it's just it's it's really good goodness gracious wasn't that intro amazing that intro was both visually uh um stimulating and grossed me out at the same time <laughs> but it was really good i really got some good nuggets from that as well so one of the things that was said in this book is that um it is uh atomic habits atomic habits and one of the things the book says in the beginning it says not really the very beginning but it says the quality of our lives often depends on the quality of our habits oh child i don't know who just got a smack in the face smack on the shoulder smack in the head i don't know it says the quality of our lives often depends on the quality of our habits with the same habits, you end up with the same results. Sounds like insanity, right? But with better habits, anything is possible. Ooh! So it smacks you down and then it also builds you up and give you hope. Like, you know, there's still an opportunity to improve. There's still an opportunity to change as well. I'll read that again. It says the quality of our lives often depends on the quality of our habits. With the same habits, you end up with the same results. But with better habits, anything is possible. And so I thought that that was just amazing. I thought that that was wonderful um as well it's definitely a great 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 phenomenal book to read diamond good morning how are you um welcome to the morning team diamond coming in after we done gone through the stuff you felt like they were talking to you when you first read read that it really did really did so here are the, the th okay so let's really look at this let's dissect this for a moment family let's dissect this for a moment because i dissected a bit last night with um you know the get your goal on group you know i was halfway like you said you felt like he was talking to you, you know like when you go to church and the pastor or whether it be a guest pastor or something speak is preaching and then you feel to yourself like he's talking exactly to you like he knows your business he or she um, and then like, you know, every time they glance in your direction, you think they looking at you because <laughs> they're calling you out. I felt like this book was calling me out because raise your hands if you really and truly can look. And, and, and I think if you read the book, it will become clearer to you. Um, I feel like, I feel like I have some okay habits. But then after reading this, it was like, my habits are crappy. 
<laughs> they might not be so good. I mean, maybe I should be reevaluating these habits that I do have. I mean, I thought that they were good. I thought that they were good. Ah, uh, this is not, no. I was like, I thought they was good. But this is also the same thing that the, you know, that the word of God does for us is we look like, I thought, I thought that was the right thing to be doing, Lord. The Lord is like, nah, boo, that wasn't the right thing to be doing. So now we have to shift. We have to make a change. <laughs> right, Shalice, I thought so. I did. That's when that whole scripture pops into your head. There's a way that seems right to a man, but leads to destruction. Oh, goodness. So, Lord, is this habit leading me to destruction? What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? Ah! Ah! <laughs> so, let me just say that the book, Atomic Habits, and, and, and what you all can do is search YouTube for the audiobook, Atomic Habits. Search Google for Atomic Habits PDF, and you'll be able to also pull up a, t a PDF. You can read it on your um, uh, Kindle. You can purchase the book on Amazon. I'm actually about to go buy my book in a minute um, because that needs to be done. I There's so many good things to highlight in that book. It's not even funny. And I'll try to share with us, you know, those things as well that we can highlight. You made some changes real quick after reading the book, Shalise. I'm telling you, I was like, maybe, yeah, nah, okay. Yeah, so I love the fact that these particular books that we're reading, our goal for Get Your Goal On, um, I it is definitely among one of the must-read books. Definitely among one of the must-read books. If you are going to be reading also The One Thing by Gary Keller, I would suggest that you read The One Thing by Gary Keller first and then read Atomic Habits. Because to me, and this is just me, um, Atomic Habits is really expanding on a lot of things that the one thing teaches you, but then it's also shedding light on some new things. And reading the one thing is allowing me to still keep all of these little Atomic Habits teachings in perspective. Because what tends to happen is when you read a book, you want to try to apply 10 and a half million things in order to make a change, um, you know, in order to make a change. But then with reading uh, the one thing by Gary Keller, that has given me a solid foundation to know that, no, we're not going to run all over the place. We're going to take this slowly. We're going to add these things in steps because you there's already a plan in place. You just need to make minor adjustments and don't try to turn the, plan, the, the whole cart upside down. So that's just my suggestion with these two particular books. They're absolutely wonderful read. Um, and already right out the gate, chapter one, if chapter one is the only thing that we get to read, I think chapter one is going to make you think as well. One of the things the um, book suggests also is that you got to learn how habits work. You got to learn how habits work. So that is going to be the function and the goal and the thing that I take from this book mainly, I believe, is going to be learning about habits and how they work. Because if we don't learn how habit works, habits work, then applying them or making them work for us is going to be quite difficult. So that's one of my suggestions is definitely to uh, get a hold of uh, that book and read that book as well. So, uh, you know, read and apply something, read and apply something. You're so bad at being consistent. Well, you know, that's, there you go. That's one of the things that we need to understand. Like, how can we be consistent? Because guess what? We're consistent with something. Whether it is we're consistent with bad habits or we're consistent with good habits, we're consistent with something. And we, if we learn what those triggers are that's triggering us to be consistent, what our motivators are, and I think this book is going to be doing something to help us as well. But we're, we're, we are all consistent with something. We're all consistent with some things. So, so we just got to try to make it be consistency in the things that's going to lead us towards progress. Okay. Um, so that's, I will, like I said, I'll try to share something from the book. Um, and let me put it in here. That's going to be, so share 
y'all, this too much stuff. Share daily. Um, tip from Atomic Habits. So we'll do that. This is for March. March planning. And this is social media. And this also is social media. Okay. Um, that's another aspect of the book. How do we perceive our identity uh, known as a shift in how we talk about ourselves? Yes. Let me just tell you, like, this whole book is on fire. This whole book is on fire. Like I said, chapter one is already on fire. So I will do my very best to share this stuff as well in um, this month going into March until we're doing it. You can hear the school announcements from your porch. Well, Shalice, I'm gonna need you to make sure you write the school announcements in your plan or whatever pertains to you. <laughs> whatever pertains to you. Okay, y'all. Um, let us get into, I'm gonna share with you what our reading is going to be for this week as far as our um, Bible reading. And then I'm going to have to um, run as well because I told y'all already we are, um, I'm on a uh, time crunch because I got appointments um, this afternoon. So I have to make sure that I get some things done here before the appointment because I'm trying to be consistent. I'm trying to be purposeful with my time. So trying to make sure that um, gets done. And oh my gosh, there's another tip where it says uh, about, it talks about time. So mm -mm, we, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The Assyrians are beaten um, is the name for this week's um, study. I think. Am I the right one? Yes. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so let's not do Monday. Okay, how can I do... Sab Here you go. Here we go. And I want to point out something. I'm going to be reading from Sabbaths 1. And I want to point out something to y'all because I think this is so important. Um, the memory text for the week is taken from Isaiah 37 verse 16. For those who are new to the channel, we do all sorts of things. We do planner, um, related items. We talk about everyday regular life stuff. Sometimes we might overshare, um, <laughs> about that. And then we also do introduce the word of God as well. We share the word of God because we are, we needs it to be able to survive. Um, and so. Uh, uh, we do that if we we would love for you to join us as we do this but if you are not able to join us as we do this then it's okay we'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 a.m you've enjoyed it it's your second time through because you didn't implement any change there you go sharon and that's why the process you know I, I like the process um that we're taking and get your goal on as well because we can't have that we cannot have that um, Isaiah 37 verse 16 memory text says, Lord of heavens army, you are the God of Israel. Your throne is between the gold cre uh, creatures, which is your angels. It says gold creatures with wings. Only you are the God of all the kingdoms of, of the earth. You made the heavens and the earth. You <clears throat> no, there's no morning tea tomorrow. No morning tea tomorrow. So, so day after, usually it would be tomorrow, but yeah, we've got a, a procedure to do. So none tomorrow. Thanks for the reminder. Make a picture of this story in your mind. Okay. So I'm going to tell y'all a story, right? Get your imagination ready. Like imagination station, get your imagination ready. A skinny man walks barefoot with his two sons. Another family loads all their belongings into a cart pulled by an ox. If you don't know what an ox is, it's like a cow. The cart is being pulled by a cow. The ox looks as if it has not eaten anything for a long time. So basically, the ox look like it's starving. It's malnutrition. And it's pulling this cart. This other family is loading their stuff in it and the skinny man is walking barefoot with his two sons. 
some people do not have a cart at all. So if they don't have a cart, y'all, they got to carry their own, their own stuff. So, so they carry all that they own on their shoulders. Soldiers are everywhere. They knock down a city gate. Some soldiers shoot arrows at the people on top of the city wall. Dead bodies are everywhere. Mm, are y'all imagining? So that was the first one. That was the first picture. Now make a new picture in your head. A king sits on his throne. People bring him treasures and prisoners of war. Some prisoners beg the king for mercy. Men who wrote about this king always started their record with these words. Sennacherib, king of the whole earth, king of Assyria. That's your second picture. The pictures you made in your mind were real pictures on the walls of the palace of Sennacherib. Today, these same pictures are in the British Museum. They tell a surprising story about the suffering of God's people. Mm. Mm. Y'all, can y'all imagine... Can you imagine, right? And I wanted to make sure that I shared that story with us this morning because y'all, it's a beautiful day today. Oh, it's such a beautiful day. In contrast to these two pictures that you could have in your mind, right? of situations and circumstances that could possibly be happening to any of us even today, even today, right? In, in, in diverse places on, on this planet. But today, it's not happening to us. We are so blessed today. Oh my goodness. We are in the shelter of a home. We are in a pretty peaceful state. Oh my goodness. We don't have to worry about those things right now. And so I want us to have that attitude of gratitude as we go throughout this entire week. Thinking about the sufferings of others knowing that we are so protected by our loving savior, by our loving father. Mm -hmm. We are so protected. Oh my Lord, help us and give him glory. Give him glory. Give him glory. Because he is worthy of all of our praise that we can give him um, as well. So we are going to pray to close out. I pray that each and every one of you have a fantastic day today. Always throughout the day, several times throughout the day today, lifting up God in praise. Just lifting up your praise to him. And letting him know how grateful you are as you look at everything that you own or you have acquired, everything that you have the ability to do. Lord, thank you for this computer. Lord, thank you for the cell phone and the connection and the money to pay the bill. Lord, thank you for heat in our homes. Lord, we thank you so much in the mighty name of Jesus because we have food to eat today. We have tongues and we can talk. We have minds and we can understand, oh God. We have ears and we can hear. We have family, Father, Lord, and friends that we can talk to. We have people that we can shout your love to, oh God. We 
thank you. We thank you for delivering us from ourselves. We thank you for, for delivering us from the hands of the enemy this week. We thank you for wanting to bring us into such a loving relationship with you this day, oh God. Oh, you are our God. You are our Savior, our Redeemer. You are our everything. And so we pray today that the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts today be acceptable, not in the sight of man, but in your sight, oh God. Mm. In Jesus' name, we ask and we pray these things, Father. Whoever is lost, we ask that you find them. Whoever is hungry, O oh God, we ask that you share with us how to help feed them. Whoever is poor in spirit, Father Lord, we ask that you help us to uplift them. Show us how we can do these things. All for your glory. In your precious son, Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. 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 Y'all. <laughs> you don't know what to do. <laughs> Somebody need to go on in Diamond. Diamond is on here. Where's Diamond? Diamond is still on here. Maybe Diamond can go live at 8 a.m. in the morning and share. <laughs> Diamond, can you go live in the morning? Huh? Huh? Diamond is like, who's getting up that early, Tamara? <laughs> Diamond is like, who is getting up that early, Tamara? I don't know. What you talking about, Tamara? What you talking about, Tamara? <sighs> so, y'all, maybe Diamond, we can convince her to set an alarm and get up early tomorrow morning and do a morning tea as well for us. See, Diamond, there you go. Shalice has said it. So shall it be. Miss Washington has agreed. She's second the motion. <laughs> Diamond, I'm going to call you in a little bit. We're going to set that up, Diamond. <laughs> Y'all. Why, why break Zoom? Uh, you got to keep everybody company tomorrow morning. <laughs> so... <laughs> So, I'm going to call you afterwards. So, morning tea tomorrow, 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Diamond's channel, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to talk to y'all a little bit. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>